Hi, my name is Per. I just want to show you a quick example on how to use mocks and spies using the Mokito framework. Uh, the code I will be using is um, based on an article written by Martin Fowler called Mox Aren't Stubs. He uh, uses an example with an order and a warehouse and I have the same code or uh, another version of the code and you can find it in GitHub at Perman PG4100 uh, Mokito Solutions. So the code is quite simple. We have uh, an order with a name and some quantity and uh, a boolean field. And uh, in order to fill the order, we need uh, to cooperate with the warehouse. So it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we can only fill this if the warehouse has enough inventory of that specific product and uh, that quantity. So if the warehouse has enough inventory, we will remove uh, the quantity of that product from the warehouse and say that field is true. But what we are going to test now using Mox and Spy is that although we see that the warehouse has enough inventory, we can still receive a runtime exception when we try to remove the product with a specific quantity. So, and uh, we want to see that something is written to the log when this exception occurs. So, I have started writing the test in the normal three phases uh, with arrange, act and search. So basically in the range phase we uh, build up a test case creating objects or mo uh, mocks and spies and so on. So in this first example I will use a mock. Mock is easy to use using Mokito. You can just call the mock method because now I have uh, imported a Mokito here done with static import so that I can call these methods uh, like this. So now, now I have a mock of this warehouse and I start stubbing this mock. So I say that when the has inventory method is called with anything you should return true. So uh, um, yes and uh, I need an order and uh, instead of writing these uh, or creating these objects inside the method, I have a separate test data provider uh, giving me just uh, an order, nothing specific going on here. Um, it's just an order with some specific product name and uh, quantity. And I need a logger, so I will just add a mock logger to this order. As we can see here. So the order now has a mock logger and it will cooperate with a mock warehouse. And uh, the stubbing of the warehouse is that when has inventory is called with any uh, product and any quantity, it will return true. And what we really wanted to test was that when rem the mo remove method is called, with any arguments, we will throw a runtime exception. So we need to stub the uh, mock warehouse and say that uh, when remove is called, you will throw a runtime exception. So in the act phase, that's when we call the method uh, method on the test. And uh, so in our case, that is uh, to call the field method. And uh, for that we use of course the mock warehouse that we have stubbed. And uh, what in the last phase, we want to assert something or verify something. 
and uh, in this case I want to assert that the order is not filled and I want to do a behavioral test that the logger But what, what did we want to test about the logger? We wanted to test that uh, the information about the runtime exception was actually written to log. That was the purpose of this test. So this first assert here is really not exactly what we wanted to test, but it's okay to have it here, I think. So um, we want to make sure that the info method is called in the logger so that we know that information is written to log. Just a few words about uh, the stubbing here. Remember that when you accept any string, for example for this argument, you have to use this um, argument matchers in all the arguments. Uh, or else we will receive an exception. So let's see if uh, the test passes. Looks good. Runtime exception on fill is written to log. So let's just see what if I comment this code right here where the information is actually written to the log. Let's see if it still passes. It does not. So when the production code actually does not write the information to log, we see that the test fails. So I will just test it there again. So let's just revisit it. I used a uh, mock warehouse because I want to <coughs> wanted to stub two things. I wanted to stub that when has that uh, has inventory method is called, this mock object will return return true. And I just had uh, an ordinary uh, order with a mock logger, and then I did a new stubbing of the warehouse mock, so that when remove is called with anything you should throw a runtime exception. So this is the two parts of my stubbing. Return true to the has inventory call and throw a runtime exception when the remove method is called. So with that, with that stubbing in place, I can call, I can act, I can do the fill method using this mock warehouse. And I can assert that the order is not filled because uh, an exception is thrown here. So I expect the order not to be filled. Now I want to verify that the info message, info method in the logger is actually called. So that's also the name of the method. So that was using mocks, and now I want to do the same thing uh, by using uh, a spy instead. So. So I want to test the same thing as I did earlier, but I want to use a spy instead of a mock. So I don't want to have a mock warehouse, I just want to have a normal one. And I will get that from my test data provider. Because uh, when we write automated tests, we also want to make sure that the test code is properly written and easy maintainable. So that's why I provide these helper methods for creating uh, objects that you will need in multiple tests. So this is just to create a default test warehouse uh, where with some uh, inventory. So I'm the normal object and the spy 
is uh, a copy of this normal object. So we create the spy by just calling the spy method and providing the object to be copied as a spy and I don't want to mock it so I remove that one and uh, when I used the mock I didn't care what kind of order I had because uh, I stubbed the has inventory method in the warehouse anyway but this time I want to make sure that I have an order that can be filled so I have this helper method that will provide it will provide me a order that can be filled based on the warehouse that I provide. So when I provide this spy warehouse, I know that I will get a order that will have enough uh, or ha will not have more inventory of a specific product that the warehouse can provide. So my, now I have a normal warehouse but I I create it as a spy, a copy of this warehouse, and I have an order that may be filled using this spy. And I add the mock logger as I did uh, in the former method. And so when we use a spy, we have a normal object, we're, but we're still able to stub methods. Uh, and um, so, so, so this is uh, the same stubbing as I did earlier. So I do not stub a call to the has inventory method. I use a real object with enough inventory in the warehouse, but I still stub the fact that when the remove method is called, I want this spy to throw a runtime exception. And we do the same action here. We want to call the fill method. But we have a different order and a different warehouse. And I do want to do the same assertions and verify. So I want to make sure that the order, the order is not filled, and I want to verify that the logger, the info method in logger is actually called. And we see that it works. And I can do the same check again to see what if I do not write to logger here, will it will the test fail? And we see that both these methods fail when the information is, is not written to log. So the difference between using a mock and a spy, uh, the, the spy is the object, normal object, functioning like, just like another warehouse, but we are still able to stub uh, certain methods, whatever you want to stub. So we stub the same method using a mock and a spy here, the remove method because that's what we actually want to test. We want to test that when the remove method throws a runtime exception, we can ver verify that the info method in the logger is called so that the uh, information about the runtime exception is written to log. So I hope that was uh, understandable and remember that this code is found in GitHub so you can just download it yourself and and uh, hopefully get to learn the difference between spice and mock using the Makita framework.